Suite Admins! Welcome back to this month's edition of What's New for G Suite Admins. Shoshana here, and I'm excited to share with you the feature updates from the month of March. Let's get started! Here's the headline news from the month of March. Security tools are only effective at stopping threats if they're deployed and managed at scale, but getting everyone in your organization to adopt these tools ultimately hinges on how easy they are to use. It's for this reason that G Suite has always aimed to give admins simpler ways to manage access, control devices, ensure compliance, and keep data secure. To deepen and expand Google Cloud's customers' controls over their security, we're making phishing and mobile management controls available to all G Suite versions. Many of these features will be turned on by default and, in most cases, your users won't have to do a thing. We're applying machine learning, or ML, to billions of threat indicators and evolving our models to quickly identify what could be a phishing attack in the making. Information from these self-learning ML models help us flag suspicious content. We'll take a look in the admin console later on. Securing mobile devices is one of the best ways for businesses to keep data safe. With new proactive security settings, basic device management is automatically enabled for mobile devices that access G Suite. We'll take a look in the admin console later on. And now let's look at our admin updates. The Security Center is a tool that brings together security analytics, actionable insights, and best practice recommendations from Google to help you protect your organization, data, and users. You can now find some new additions to the Security Center, including new security charts that show OAuth activity and business email compromise scam threats, new mobile management charts to help you examine activity like when devices have been hijacked, rooted, or jailbroken, ways to reorganize the dashboard, and ways to analyze your organization's security health. Check out the Help Center for instructions on getting started with the Security Center. We recently introduced new settings for advanced protection against phishing and malware attempts. You can find these new anti-phishing and malware settings in the admin console by going to Apps, clicking on G Suite, clicking on Gmail, and then scrolling down to Safety. In the Attachments section, you can enable all settings to ensure that your organization is protected against, encrypted attachments from untrusted senders, and attachments with scripts from untrusted senders. In the Links and External Images section, by enabling all settings, you can ensure that links behind a shortened URL are identified, linked images are scanned, and a warning prompt is shown anytime a user clicks on a link to an untrusted domain. To maximize security, the Identify Links Behind Shortened URLs and Scanned Linked Images settings have been automatically enabled for existing customers as of April 4, 2018. If you don't want these settings enabled, you can disable or customize them here. And finally, down in the Spoofing and Authentication section, you can enable all settings to ensure that your organization is protected against domain spoofing based on similar domain names, spoofing of an employee name, inbound email spoofing your domain, and any unauthenticated emails. For more information on these new settings, see the Help Center. We encourage all of our customers to use two-step verification for added protection when they sign into their G Suite accounts. In particular, we recommend using security keys, which are easy to use and better at preventing common attacks like phishing. Because we believe security keys can be pivotal in the effort to protect any organization, we're now giving G Suite admins in all G Suite editions the ability to restrict users' two-step verification method to security keys only. Let's take a look in the admin console. From the home page, click on Security, and then click on Basic Settings. Scroll down and click the Go to Advanced Settings to Enforce Two-Step Verification link under Two-Step Verification. In the Allowed Two-Step Verification Methods section, you can enforce Security Key Only option for your domain. Here, you can also choose the length of the Two-Step Verification Suspension Grace Period for your domain. G Suite admins can also manage user security keys for two-step verification through adding and revoking them in the admin console. Let's take a look at this at the admin console. From the users page, scroll down to the bottom and click on show more, and then security. Here in the security keys section, 
you can select Add New Key. Users you enroll this way don't need to register their phone numbers to register their security keys. Lastly, G Suite admins can manage user security keys for two-step verification through viewing a security report on security key usage in the admin console. In the admin console, let's take a look at how you can quickly view a security report on security key usage. From the security reports page, click select column in the top right. In the add remove additional column window that opens up, select security keys enrolled to show the data in your report. The report will show a chart of your users that have enrolled their security keys and also a table that you can export. Now that we've covered managing security keys for two-step verification, let's talk about managing how frequently your users will be prompted for two-step verification. When a user signs into their G Suite account, they're given an option to remember this computer. When this box is checked, they're not prompted for their second factor again, even if they sign out of their Google session and sign back in. As a part of this launch, we're giving all admins the option to show their users this checkbox so they can trust their device at the initial two-step verification and won't have to complete two-step verification every time they enter their password. In the admin console, let's take a look at how you can affect your user's two-step verification frequency. From the basic settings section of the security page, scroll down and click the go to advanced settings to enforce two-step verification link under two-step verification. Scroll down the page to find the two-step verification frequency section. When allow the user to trust the device at two-step verification is selected, users will see the remember this device checkbox option when signing into their G Suite accounts. This is the default. When the do not allow the user to trust the device at two-step verification is selected, users will be forced to complete two-step verification every time they sign in. For more information on setting the two-step verification frequency for your domain, see the Help Center. To protect your organization's data, we automatically sign any G Suite user out of Google services they're using on the web after two weeks. We've heard, however, that some organizations need different durations for different use cases. We're now giving you the ability to specify the duration of web sessions for Google services. Unless a user signs out on their own beforehand, they'll be automatically signed out at the end of that duration. You can do this in the admin console by clicking Security and then scrolling down and clicking Google Session Control. Click on the Duration drop-down list to show time frequencies you can set. For more information on specifying session duration for Google services, check out the Help Center. We recently introduced several new features for G Suite to help keep your data secure which includes having basic mobile management automatically turned on for your domain by the end of the year. To control the timing of this change, you can do one of three things. Turn on basic mobile management now and enforce a passcode. Turn on basic mobile management now but don't enforce a passcode. Or enable and then disable mobile management. This will prevent basic mobile management from being turned on automatically. For more information on Google Mobile Management and applying password settings for mobile devices, please visit the Help Center. We're introducing Activity Dashboard in Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides to make it easier for users to collaborate. An important part of collaboration is deciding how and when to follow up with others. To help inform these decisions, users with edit access can see who has viewed their file and when they viewed it. As an admin, you can determine whether viewing data from your organization's users is shown in the Activity Dashboard. Specifically, you can choose to make viewing data for your organization's users visible, not visible, or only visible within your organization. To access the Activity Dashboard settings in the Admin Console, navigate to the Drive and Dock page from Apps, G Suite. Scroll down to the bottom and click Activity Dashboard Settings. Here, you can review and change your organization's Activity Dashboard settings. In the Users View History section, Select an option to determine who can see individual users' file views in the Activity Dashboard. Next to the Access to Activity Dashboard section, select an option to determine whether your users can see Activity Dashboard data for files they are editors on. For more information about Activity Dashboard and FAQs, check out the Help Center. With Single Sign-On, or SSO, your users can sign in just one time to access all of their enterprise cloud applications. 
For the month of March, we're adding an additional 49 applications with pre-integrated SSO support to our third-party apps catalog, including BugCrowd, Huddle, Pipedrive, and Saba, just to name a few. You can find our full list of pre-integrated applications and instructions for installing them in the Help Center. With user provisioning, once you've set up SAML integrated apps, you can set up user provisioning to create, modify, or delete a user's identity in G Suite, and those changes are automatically made in the third-party app. This month, we're adding auto-provisioning support for four new apps, Kudos, 15.5, Rollbar, and Honey. The setup and configuration of user provisioning varies from app to app, so check out the Help Center to learn more. Well, that's it for this month's updates. Check out our G Suite release calendar and What's New newsletter to stay informed. You can also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and save the playlists. And if you want to learn more about these updates, follow the links in the video description to dig deeper. This has been Shoshana with What's New for G Suite Admins March Edition. Thanks for watching.